Hey guys, welcome back to the Rough Cuts Garage. Today we're going to be installing a primary and secondary fuel filter on our first gen Cummins. So all these parts, the part numbers will be in the description below uh, if you wish to do this project yourself. So this here is a Baldwin BF1293 SPS 10 micron fuel filter. You're going to need a filter head, a bracket to mount it to, a pigtail for your whiff sensor. Um, this filter here will go to your stock filter head. It's a BF7772. Um, hardware to mount your bracket along with hardware to mount to your filter head. Specs will be in the description as well for this filter head for the bolts. Right here you have your quick connects to hose fitting. Uh, sorry, quick connects with hose barb on them. Um, and then you have these, uh, the male end of the quick connect with a hose barb. You're gonna need one of those, one of these, two 10AN threaded um, fittings that go into the end of your filter head here. And they go to a hose barb as well. Uh, we've got some hose clamps, some 3 8 fuel hose, that's good for diesel, along with some more wire so that we can extend the stock with sensor connection um, all the way to back on the frame where I plan on having this filter um, to this whiff sensor. So along with that project, I'm going to, when I have the tank down, because I'm gonna drop the tank in order to access the bolts to mount the filter uh, bracket there, I'm going to replace the tank filler neck gasket. I figure it's a 30 year old truck and it's never been replaced, so while I'm down there, I might as well swap it out. And then another project that I have on the go uh, are these camper tie downs. So my buddy Wes, who's gonna join us in a moment, he fabbed up these uh, really beefy camper tie downs. And so I'll mount this guy up uh, as well while I have the tank down. Okay, so I'll throw a diagram up here just to illustrate what we wanna do. So we'll work from the tank forward to the engine. So over here, we have the fuel tank. The fuel supply line is the hose on the right. We're gonna branch off from that quick connect using one of our lengths of fuel hose to the filter head. The filter head will have the large fuel filter on it, the 10 micron fuel filter. So we're gonna have that quick connect that goes from the filter head to the stock fuel line. And that way, as you can see with the dash line and the note down here, if need be, you can delete this filter from the entire system by just swapping out your quick connects and going back to the stock setup. Then you go from your stock fuel supply line all the way up to your stock filter head where we have our um, five micron fuel filter. Our plan is to step it down and that way, if one gets clogged up with much with a bunch of debris and you don't have a replacement filter on hand, you can delete it from the system. So then for our whiff sensor, we have that water and fuel light on the first gen trucks. So the whiff sensor, we're gonna move to the first filter, um, the 10 micron filter, because we want it to pick up water in the fuel far ahead of when, by the time it gets to the engine and the stock fuel filter side. So there's a summary of our plan there. So let's go ahead and uh, start the project. Okay, so right here we're underneath the driver's side of the truck uh, towards the rear tire and this is kind of where I want to mount the large fuel filter so I want to try and get it up here so around there and then I have room to place my uh, camper tie down here um, and that will provide some protection from the front wheel and then this um, front hanger for the rear spring will also provide some a little bit of protection from the rear wheel um, but it's also kind of just out of the path of the rear wheel as well in order to do that uh, we're gonna have to drop the tank so I'll show you how to do that so right there is the fuel filler neck so that'll have to be disconnected uh, at the filler cap and then you can wiggle that around and wiggle that out of the tank and then right here, right on top, you've got two fuel quick connects and then a wire clip that you'll have to undo.
the tank out and this neck or sorry this uh, grommet is what we're going to be replacing here basically to give you an idea of what it looks like on top you've got a clip here for your wiring harness that you press in on that and just pull out it's got these wings on the side that you can push on it makes it relatively easy um, then you have your supply and your return here those are quick connects you can see so they're pinch and then just pull off um, they're kind of just difficult because they're so close together here that it's hard to get your fingers in there to actuate the clips um, fill neck in there and then your tank vent to that's connected to your fill neck is uh, goes on there and that's your eight millimeter hose clamp that's the old one here's the new one there we go so behind the tank here you can see the fuel lines brake lines wiring harness um, there's your two fuel quick connects right there and what we're going to do now since we have access is we're going to install a camper tie down uh, only one today just on the behind this section here So Buddy West showing up, that's his rig there. We both came up with this idea for the 10 micron down to a five micron filter. Um, we've got the camper tie down attached to the frame here. And that'll provide some protection for the filter, which I think we will either mount just behind it or back here ahead of the uh, rear spring hanger. Um, so, We'll mock it up and then uh, we'll get back to you. Roughly marked it on the frame where we're gonna put it. And it's gonna go there. And then uh, I'm just gonna clamp it onto the frame and then we'll drill the holes, drill the bolts through and then we can start um, attaching all the filter components. So while the tank is down, we'll have better access to get from the outside of this filter head to the uh, stock fuel line that's up here. And then we'll build that section of line and then we'll put the tank back up and then we will build the in portion that can plug straight into the tank over the frame here. Okay, so one thing that we're doing is we're lubing up all of the seal there, little gasket, and that's gonna go on the outside of the filter head, the 10 AN fitting. And that'll go on one side of this hose, and on the other side we'll have our quick connect. There we go. And then we're going into this one. Yeah. Where's the plastic clip? Yeah, okay, there we go. There we go. So we have to get this little plastic clip off to go on the aluminum part. Like that. And then that can fit back in the quick connect. Ta-da! Perfect. Sweet! Oh, oh baby. So we've got the other fitting here on the end for the hose barb. Uh, we've got this line into the stock fuel line. And then now we're going to put the tank back up and hook everything up. And then we can run the line from the inside into the supply side of the fuel tank. Okay, so we've got the tank up. We're just hooking up this last little bit of strap here. And Wes is going to start running the line from the supply side to the inside of the filter head. Got the fuel tank back in position here with all the connections made. We've got the fuel filter head hooked up and the filler neck has been uh, re-hooked up as well with the vent. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna top up the beefy filter here with diesel and then we'll throw it on the filter head. Um, in the meantime as well, I'm going to swap out the stock filter with the new filter uh, for the stock filter head. And then after we've hooked those up, we'll give it a test run and then we can focus on wiring up the water and fuel sensor.
we've got the uh, new fuel filter on the stock filter housing. We've bled the system. We've topped up uh, the primary filter here. Uh, we just haven't connected the whiff sensor yet. All the hoses are connected. So let's flash up the truck and we'll check for leaks. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to connect the Deutsch connector to one end of this wire and then I'm gonna run the length of wire forward in which case we're going to stick this end on so we can connect it to the stock um, water and fuel sensor light. Okay, so now we're coming up underneath the engine bay. You can see the gray wire right, or the gray pair of wires right there. So right there is the stock whiff sensor um, clip right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the one from the old whiff sensor, and that way it'll just plug directly into here. Okay, so now we can hook it back up. All right, moment of truth. Hmm. So up here we've got uh, we've got both filters hooked up. Everything is fine. It's been purged and everything. Um, I've got the Hungry Diesel um, high volume low pressure lift pump installed. That's why you're seeing 15 PSI, not 5 PSI on the fuel pressure gauge. Um, it normally bounces around like this, uh, but I haven't noticed any significant drop in fuel pressure after adding the extra filter. So um, that seems to be pretty promising. So one issue I'm running into is the water and fuel light is still on. Um, I've purged both filters uh, at the petcock and no water has been found in there at all. I've wiggled the wires around. It's gone out briefly, but then come back on. So another part that you're going to need for this job is a passive whiff sensor. This sensor is from Entratech Systems down in the States. So after doing some testing, we noticed that the stock whiff sensor on the truck is a passive whiff sensor, therefore no built-in resistance. And the sensor that comes with the Baldwin filter has resistance built in. So the problem that you're going to run into in that case is the light will always stay on on the dash. So what I'm going to do is I've got our uh, passive whiff sensor here. I'm going to hook it up to the truck and then I'm going to put water and diesel in these respective cans and then I'll hook it up to the truck, dip it into the water, see if the light comes on, dip it into the diesel, see if the light goes out and then that way we can prove that this will be um, good enough replacement for the filter that comes with the Baldwin, or sorry, for the sensor that comes with the Baldwin. All right, so we got water in this one. And then the old El Paso can, throw some diesel, and it's dry, no water in there. So sensor's going in the diesel, sensor's in the diesel. Water and fuel light is not on. Got the water. We'll take the sensor out. I'll put it in water. Water and fuel light is on. We'll take it out of the water. I'll put it back in the diesel. And water and fuel light goes out. Okay, so that's promising news considering when I tried this sensor and I did the same thing. Um, 
the water and fuel light just stayed on the whole time because it detected the resistance in this sensor. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug this. We will swap the sensors out, uh, bleed any air in the line, and then uh, that should be good to go. So we've got our new sensor on and we loomed up just to protect it and you can still actually, if water gets caught up in here, it'll still drain out here and here. So I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty good. So that there sums up the job of installing a 10 micron and a 5 micron Baldwin fuel filter on our first gen Cummins. Hope you enjoyed and we hope this video helps and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.